It's January 30th, 2017. I'm Sue Cohen with the San Marcos Heritage Association, and we have the distinct pleasure today of interviewing three ladies that were instrumental in the forming of the San Marcos Historical Districts. We have Diana Mays, Ellie Stewart, and Betty Wolverton, and we're going to start off uh, talking to Diana because the Belvin Street District came first. Um, and tell us a little bit, Diana, about how you guys decided to get going on that. Um, I've been trying to remember all of that, <laughs> but my former husband, Larry Murphy, and I moved to town in 73, and we bought an old house on Belvin. In fact, it was the Belvin house, um, and it was in horrible disrepair, and we just decided we were going to totally renovate it. One of the things that brought us to San Marcos was the charming city and the old sections of town with a lot of old homes still intact. And we had been to other cities where this wasn't the case. And I don't know, we just started meeting people on our street and in town that really wanted to preserve that. And we started talking about forming a historic district, I think for several reasons, mainly the preservation, <clears throat> but also making sure that things don't happen to the house, at least what you can see from the street, that destroys the integrity of the architecture and the street and the house and everything. And the more we talked about it, the more we thought, well, maybe the direction would be to form a district where there were guidelines and there were um, uh, there, were, there were certain codes that you had to uh, follow in order to keep the house the way it was or it could be for that uh, era. And so we just, uh, the more we talked, and my former husband Larry Murphy uh, is an attorney and he started gathering information from other areas. I think uh, Atlanta, he had gotten some information. Several different places that had historic districts, he started looking at their guidelines, their rules and regulations, and how to go about setting it up. And that's where it started. Um, and we met, uh, as Betty reminded me just a little while ago, we met at your house, didn't we? The first when meeting? We for the first meeting for the San Antonio Street History oh, yes, District. Right. San, Antonio. San Antonio, okay, okay. Well, then I am trying, I think, as I recall, Dot Yarborough, Herb and Dot Yarborough lived on Belvin at the time, and there were several other people, and we just, and also there were people in town, Tula Wyatt being one, that was really interested in starting something like this and uh, that's I guess how it started where we met I don't remember what year was that 70, 1975 you mentioned you were trying to get it done by the bicentennial right we were trying to do that and, and so I would it imagine was, it took a while it did it took quite a while because there were there were different um, uh, rules, I guess, that Texas had set up that we had to, you know, readjust some of the, the wording of the, of the legal papers. And also, also part of it, too, was convincing neighbors the importance of having a district because mm -hmm. for a while people were really afraid of it almost because they thought, well, their taxes would go up or they would not be able to, their house would almost not be theirs. They couldn't do what they wanted to with a house. So it was a lot of PR work involved getting it started to allay any worries that they might have. And a lot of the houses were in disrepair. The, reno the renovation is very popular in this day and age, but at that time not many people were restoring the old houses. That's right. That's right. And um, our house, I know, was was just horrible. What was the address of that house? 730 Belvin. Mm -hmm. We actually looked at that house, Diana, when we moved oh, here in 71, but 
uh, it was in such disrepair and oh, we yeah. had a big family, we just decided we couldn't do that. But no. we you had all, y'all did Nandina such a great job. bushes growing up in the dining room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but it was, we could see the bones, we could see the, the hair, uh, you know, the integrity there. And so we decided um, that we wanted to take care of it. And, and the more we learned about the house, too, one of the things that we got interested, Tula Wyatt was an early woman in town that, well, she grew up here, but she knew so much history, and she would come to the house sometimes and visit with us. And I can remember one time she said as a child she would grow up and the Indians would be walking into town on Belvin. And Belvin at that time was just a dirt road. But uh, I thought that was always so interesting, just to think she, about that. Yeah, she was amazing. She was, I think, chairman of the Historical Commission yes. at that time. Yes. So she really was in a position to really push all the mm -hmm. She initiated the, the historical record keeping for this county and this city. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, was, she, she was, was an amazing lady. She yeah, more really, fun. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, back then, I mean, it was here. very insightful that y'all could look ahead and see the value of these homes when many people really couldn't. And it was just starting when you mm -hmm. when you moved here, and we moved here in '71, and mm -hmm. uh, people were just starting to uh, really realize what could be done with those beautiful old homes. And some of them had already been done when and we moved Several here. of them were used as like boarding student housing in the '70s, uh -huh. and they were run down and. Yes. Right. It's mm -hmm. funny now that the big controversy in 2017 <laughs> is the students taking over. When I was a student here in the 70s, a lot of the kids lived in houses that had been divided into 10 or 12 yeah, apartments. Definitely. And mm -hmm. right in the middle of what is now is the preserved area historical districts. Mm -hmm. Well, that was true with the house right next door to us. It's not there anymore. But what happened to that, that house? One, that one did burn. It burned, yeah. and the people that now live there, or used to live there right after we sold, um, they bought the property, they bought that extra lot, but it was uh, a single family home, and it was full of students, and I can remember having so many kids running through the yard and dogs and everything else, but... Uh, and then the house, the other side of the house, was um, was just about as bad. So slowly, people started realizing this needed to stop, and that was another impetus for forming the district to to preserve it and keep it single family, as you know. So it had to, Belvin Street was first, and then San Antonio, and these were, they had to become city ordinances. What is what is what is involved in becoming a historical district? You want to start? Maybe well, <clears throat> I I grew up in an old house, and I've always loved old houses, and so we had looked at old probably every old house that came on the market in San Marcos, um, and finally found one that we could afford and that suited our purposes, you know, suited our family. <clears throat> and we live at, at 827 West San Antonio Street. And the Belvin Street District had been in existence for quite a few years already by the time we moved there in 1977, I guess. And, um, well, they hadn't been in, a, in existence that long at that time, but I was probably jealous of the people that lived on Belvin Street. <laughs> <laughs> we all were. <laughs> and um, I remember talking, we had some work done by, um, which involved a, a local architect, Norman Yarborough, and um, I talked to him about having San Antonio Street uh, made a historic district because his parents lived on the same street, on, on that street. He grew up on that street. And, yes, and he said, oh, Betty, he said, uh, San Antonio Street doesn't have enough big old houses left, you know, you can never be um, a historic district. So I kind of gave up, but then I did some <coughs> um, canvassing of the neighborhood for a political candidate who was running for city council, and I handed out brochures to every house on the street 
And when I did that, that made me aware that I'd come up to a front door of a house that I had never paid any attention to, and it had beveled glass in it, in the, in the front door, you know. Or there'd be some other indication that this house was from an earlier time. And um, so I became more interested and thought maybe other people were. And um, I knew Larry and Diana and <clears throat> asked Larry whether he would come um, to our house. And I think I, I must have called everybody on the street that I either knew or thought might be interested. I didn't know that many people by that time, but that was in 1981. And in, uh, let's see, the date was June the 4th, 1981. We had our first meeting at our house, um, and Diana and Larry were there. And Larry made a presentation to the people that came. As I remember, it just poured cats and dogs that night. But we had, I think, nine people show up. Um, they were Mrs. Leonard Alberg, Mr. Dud Dudley Doby, Mr. Donald Gerard, Dr. Ronald Yeager, Mrs. Keith Levin, Mrs. Houston Marney, Mr. Harold Robbins, Mr. Harry Stewart, Mr. Yancey Yarborough, and of course my, uh, my husband and I were both there, and Larry and Diana. <clears throat> and Larry made a presentation explaining kind of what, it, what they'd, you'd gone through on Belvin Street, and um, explaining that it did not involve a zoning change. Um, that it really wasn't all that difficult to work with the city on. But, but the main thing was to preserve the historic atmosphere of, this, of the um, street. And so to, to preserve the appearance of the houses as they could be seen from the street. Um, and the notes that I took that evening um, say that the people, all the people there, agreed that it was a good idea to per, to pursue the idea of of um, looking into naming San Mar uh, San Antonio Street a historic district. And they, those people, agreed to be the steering committee, and I was the chairman. Okay. And then. We did a lot of making sure that people were uh, inv um, informed, that we didn't try to spring anything on anybody, you know, uh, but we wanted to keep them informed about what was going on. So we wrote letters and passed them out up and down the street. I don't, we didn't have any money for mailing, so I'm pretty sure we, we walked around carried all yeah. that. <laughs> and my memory is that Ellie and I and Gwen Smith, did most of that leg work. Yes, um, I think you're right about that. Okay. That one thing at that um, first meeting of the steering committee, for some reason I had written down what, um, what we decided would be the three things we needed to do, and that was first to get a list of the, all the property owners and get one number one, and then number two, get a map of the whole street, and which we did. We had a big map of San Antonio Street and each property owner, we filled in with that. And then the third thing was just to com compile a short history. And Tula Wyatt, you know, helped us a lot with that. And then later she rode up and down the street with Betty and me telling us about all the houses. That was more fun. <laughs> she knew every house and who lived in it and who built it. The whole it history <laughs> of it, yeah. So I wish we, yeah, had gotten all that. But. Did y'all have, yeah. on Belvin Street, were there people, was everybody in favor of her? Did, did y'all have to do a lot of legwork on Belvin? Because it was a new concept, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. I, I'm i pretty sure that we did, yes. Because well, you had to, I mean, you, you wanted to get everyone involved as, as much as possible. Um, 
And there was the opportunity to opt out if you didn't, because right. a few people did, I think, yeah, on Bill. That's then, that true. That's didn't true. want to be part of it. I've forgotten that. But the, yeah, I think and that's And then they right. added him in later? Are they well, in now? I'm, 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 I'm still not. Yeah, yeah, but I think a couple of them did opt in later. Yeah, they opted in later. Yeah. Because the old Pike House, the hospital, was considered public, and it was carved out of the historic district. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it later was destroyed, so... Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's. Um, I can imagine what would have happened if you guys hadn't have done this 30-some-odd years oh, ago. Yes. No telling what would have happened, really and truly, because... You know, it t- it took about a year... Yeah. Uh, for San Antonio Street to become a historic district, yeah. you know, after we had, after we felt like we had given everybody enough information, we had had a couple more meetings where we invited everybody, every property owner to come, um, and at one of those, I know Larry Murphy was was there and made his presentation again and answered questions. Uh, yes, them, yeah. and uh, when we thought we were ready, then we approached the city. And um, I think, you know, it, it went through the process of, of um, them first considering uh, adding San Antonio Street to the Historic District Ordinance is what... Uh, yes, it wasn't a totally new Right, it ordinance. was, yeah, it was a Belvin, you know, it was a and Belvin Street Ordinance. it still took ordinance. a year. <laughs> yes, it took a year, almost and, exactly. Uh, and then... It, it went through that process, and then eventually, about a year later, in July, um, it passed on the third reading. Because I've worked on subsequent editions, the Hopkins and the, Bel- the Burleson Lindsay, and then we tried to add Harvey. And we had a hard educational battle, and I can't imagine the battle y'all had because it was a totally new concept. But I people are fearful of it. They the feel the city is going to well, tell yeah. them what to do when really... It adds a protective layer. If y'all hadn't have done that, I feel like a lot of those houses would no longer be They'd here. Be gone, yeah. My I, my I memory though it. is that yeah. while I heard, you know, that some people were opposed to it, I don't remember anybody standing up at a meeting and being opposed or or coming to the city council yeah, and being opposed. I think so, Belvin Street had laid the the way and yeah. people understood it better and they weren't as afraid of it and understood that you didn't you weren't that risk on what you could do and couldn't do and I think we had we had done enough background you know to where we gave people an opportunity to voice their concerns at some of these early meetings before we actually mm-hmm. proposed it as a change in the ordinance um, and since Belvin was became a national register district, I guess y'all did additional work. Mm-hmm. And San Marcos is one is known. One of the things that we're known for now is our historical districts, and they're yes. so intact. And we need so to be sure that pat continues. yourselves on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to be sure that it doesn't get turned around at any point. Either. Well, with the growth uh, yeah. that's with San Marcos being one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, and you can almost feel it coming towards you, you and, yeah. and the protective layer of the historical districts is a really wonderful thing that was done. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. can, you can definitely see an improvement in the street from the time that it was mm-hmm. made a historic district oh, to now. You know, really can. Yeah, talk about that because back in the 70s when I was in college, many of the houses were abandoned or, I mean, it was... It's unbelievable the How transformation. Uh-huh. Well, I remember a house right across, or almost right across the street from us, um, was lived in by students, and they put planks up the front steps, and it, it has a beautiful wraparound porch on three sides of the front of the house. <clears throat> and they put planks up the front steps. They drive their motorcycles up the the front <laughs> oh, steps, and and. Um, Park them on the porch. Park them on the porch. But then the old Weatherford house on the corner yes. of San Antonio and Endicott had been a funeral home, and then it was a it a boys' board Messiah Mansion. It was a boarding house, and there were probably thirty kids living in there. They yes. didn't drive their motorcycles on the porch, but there were quite a few of them. Oh, there were quite a few, and that was a very interesting time at that 
Messiah Mansion, well, I think. And the old hospital was the Pike House. Mm -hmm. that, years. that was, um, you know, we had a lot to deal with there. Did your friends think you were crazy wanting to buy this old house and put a lot of money into it on the street that had the fraternity <laughs> house and the crumbling buildings? I mean, pe yeah. people uh, think y'all were nuts. <laughs> Did Larry restore so. his office first downtown? Or no, no, you I did don't the know. house first. We did the house, house first, yeah. Because he also was instrumental in the downtown. And when did the downtown become the historic district? Was it? It was, was after, after San Antonio and before Hopkins. Yes. So somewhere in between the eighties and the yeah, I can't remember exactly, but and there doesn't seem there was as much talk about it because I think people were more used to right, it. And, um, right. Well, so. I think uh, people slowly started realizing too. We have something special here, mm -hmm. and. I think that that's one of the charms of this part of, of Texas and and San Marcos has a lot to offer in the little neighborhoods that are still around and you don't see that in a lot of of the towns anymore and and I think that maybe having come here our eyes were more open to to knowing that this needs to be preserved. I think when you grow up in an area, sometimes you just, it never occurs to you that this could could disappear. Mm -hmm. and or that it's beautiful, yes. even when it's so yeah. right. run down. Right. Mm -hmm. Where did you move here from? We moved from Dallas. Okay. And um, just, you know, it was just a charming little town. Sleepy little town. Not anymore. And still, and y'all retired. Y'all retired here. The we, stewards. Well, we re Harry retired from the Air Force. Then he went to work at Gary Job Corps. So, and that's what brought y'all to town. Yes, we just kind of picked it out of the blue, but we wanted an old house, and we live at twelve fifty three West San Antonio. So we're right on the fringe. I think we're the last house actually. That's what I was going to ask y'all. How did y'all decide the boundaries for the district? Because it ends at the four hundred block, and it really. And then it ends at Bishop Street. Yeah. Um, How did y'all decide that? Do you remember that? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I, I would say my memory is that we we kind of went by um, the historic, the obviously important historic houses. Like your house was is pretty much at the, the, last at the far end. One, yeah. And then going up the other way, we stopped. At um, oh, uh, well, with the Nancy Yarbrough's house at that time, right? Um, uh -huh. uh, and and you didn't include next to, next the to Posey house, house. What we, we the didn't. Posey house is not in the historical district, I don't think. Is it? No, oh, it's not. It stops there at uh, not Scott Street. What's the next street? Uh, Blanco Street. Those two blocks yeah. are not in the district, and I wish they were, because yeah, we've lost were. some I stuff in that I, area. Well, were they, at that time, they didn't want to be a part of the district? That's I what I was we, wondering. That's well, what I, don't I, don't know. Think, I don't think we, you know, we just arbitrarily yeah. set those, okay. kind of did, those yeah. uh, guidelines, or those boundaries, as I remember, yeah. um, because Herndon House, you know, had already been built, so that and then I don't I can't think really what's beyond that, but it's mostly um But I can't believe that we didn't include property. the Posey house, but it's not in the it's, district. It's not. And the house on the corner of Scott and San Antonio had that house was torn down before it became a district or did it burn down? Scott and San Antonio. It's where the uh, duplexes are, right next to Karen Smith's house, the oh. Dr. Smith's house. Oh, oh right. Um, there was a big two-story house yes. there yes. that's no longer that was there. Very much like the yes, like, like the, like the What yeah. happened to that house? It was torn down before uh, the district. Before the district, right? And the condos were put up too. Well. The nineteen seventies-looking condos that really don't fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the thing about San Antonio Street, too, is that it's kind of a different um, 
thing from Belvin and that Belvin has all these one huge Victorian after another. I don't think San Antonio was ever quite that way. I think there were a lot more that aren't there now. But when you get down to my end of the street, which is um, right at the end of the historic district, our house was a farmhouse, and the one across the street that was um, the Gerards that Don Gerard lived in mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. was also a farmhouse. So and they, they and were on were double and triple little, lots. Yeah, they had a I'm farm. Still. There was a dairy out behind our house. So these these are not these magnificent houses that were that there's so more many of them on uh, San yeah, Antonio. I was going to say San Antonio has more more houses. Than Belvin, it's it's more congested. Um, it has more infill, well, but by now a lot of the houses. infill, the smaller houses that came in, are from the twenties and thirties. Well, so they're the little bungalows are historical now. Right, right. And mm -hmm. the, the oh, houses yeah. across mm -hmm. from us were all built during World War Two, because so many uh, families came mm -hmm. to be at Gary Air Force Base, and there was nowhere for them to live which our house which was not very big at the time we have added some to it but two families lived in our house during world war ii people doubled up because there wasn't housing for any for all the families that came so two families actually lived in our little bitty house a lot of people we've interviewed talk about the housing yeah. shortage during yeah. the world war ii and the houses across the street from us are all kind of just a little small mm -hmm. nothing nothing particularly beautiful about them but they're they're still historic really because of that because of being built during World War II. I did some um, canvassing of the street for a, a city council candidate at one point and I had been told by I guess Norman Yarborough who was a, uh, an architect in town and he, he said oh San Antonio Street doesn't have enough uh, historic district uh, historic houses left anymore to be a historic district but when I walked the street um, for that city council candidate I noticed even the smaller houses many of them I'd come up to the front door and there'd be beveled glass in the front door and so there were many houses that were older but not big mansions mm -hmm. And um, definitely a bigger they deserve variety to be, of homes, yeah. I think. Well, Antonio. and as Ellie said, San Antonio Street had quite the history as a street. As a street, because yeah. it, it was definitely it was a main the, thoroughfare. It was, and it's yeah. definitely the oldest street in San Marcos, much older than Hopkins or Belvin. And um, well, wasn't, isn't it called San Antonio because it was a direct It was the road to, to San Antonio, San Antonio yeah. and it. Connected, I'm not understand exactly about the Camino Real, but anyway, the San Antonio Road connected to the Camino Real that led to East Texas, to through Bastrop and um, over to Louisiana, actually, too. So they, need, they decided they needed a road going from Austin to San Antonio because by then there was a lot of traffic between those cities, and that's when they built the old San Antonio Road and that's when it came off of the Camino Real the way I'm understanding it and came through San Marcos down at University Drive there on the where the river uh, across there and then uh, up all, up to where San Antonio Street is and then in front of the courthouse and that was let's see, I think I did have a date on that but um, so it was built in 1840 when it came, that road came into San Marcos and it continued where the present courthouse is. The courthouse wasn't there then. So, um, so maybe the Belvin Street was the first suburb of San Marcos. Yes. San Antonio was the commercial the street, street and then a lot of the, mer a lot of the homes on Belvin were built by merchants, mm -hmm. cotton and lumber merchants some of the bigger they were the merchants homes right. correct true that's true yeah moved. and a lot of them moved there because they wanted their children to go to the coronal mm -hmm. institute mm -hmm. which was um and some of them actually lived outside of san marcus in stringtown 
which was a string of houses, like not that far out, but I guess it was quite a drive in at the time. So um, they actually built these houses on Belvin Street so their kids could go to the Cornell Institute. And people used to come in from Stringtown, and I have a lovely picture of these older ladies all dressed up, you know, in their little caps and everything, sitting at some home in San Antonio Street. Then they've come in to spend the day. No. This was what they would do. A whole group of them would get together, and right. when they came in, they spent the whole day there. I'm not sure exactly what they did. Uh, just visited, I guess. Mm -hmm. but. So Stringtown is another whole story, but it's it was connected to San Marcos in that, I mean, it really was part of San Marcos. Mm -hmm. Gwen Smith talked about how they rode the hor their horse from Smith Avenue down to San Antonio right. Street to go to town and... Yeah. Right. Well, mo well, uh, of course, that's true in any town, but you know, they used to at that point in time they had carriage houses out and back. And, um, oh, everybody came to town to oh, yeah. do everything. Right. Yeah. And a number of them probably had more acreage at that time, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. So after they became a district, when people buy into the district, they're notified that they have to follow the rules of the district on they're supposed to how be. does that how does that work i think the i think actually it needs to be told to them by the real estate agent and i think most of them do every and that, now and then somebody claims they weren't told but um i think probably there's I been a lot of progress made on mm -hmm. that there's a, a city historical district commission mm -hmm that when you want to make any changes now you have to or get a building permit you have to go before the commission and since San Antonio Street Hopkins has been added and Burleson and Lindsay have and been the, and the downtown and the Dunbar that's right the Dunbar, Dunbar so now Austin. there's that's quite a section of town mm -hmm. and it, I mean, it's a bigger responsibility now for the commission it members is. because they have a much bigger area. Area. Yeah. So, and it. I mean, it, to me, it's a little worrisome because it has gotten so big. I can see in the future that people people change their way of thinking. They may think, "Oh, we don't need to preserve all this. You know, we really need that property." I don't think Belvin Street, since it's on the National Register, could ever be. Um, changed, but I don't know about the, or San Antonio Street. Is that a permanent thing? You know, you get another group in. It is something change. to think about yeah. when you think about how when I bought a house on San Antonio Street 35 years ago, yeah. totally different than it is now. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and in 35 years, how is it going to be? Yeah. When we bought our house, it was, you know, parts of it were not and not all of it's terribly attractive even now, but um, it sure but changed the whole. It is transformed from rental to desired owner-occupied restored homes. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Which, it was not that way 30 years ago. No, oh, not definitely. at all. It, no, was it was not at it all. A lot of rental. Even the zoning has been changed mm -hmm. uh, on San Antonio Street. It was, I think, probably about down to your house. The 700 it was block a multifamily. multifamily. And that was all then down zoned so that it's now single family. I mean, really, the work that y'all did back then has changed the face of this town, literally, in the best way. Wow, that sounds oh, good. <laughs> I hope, and I hope it's, it remains forever because I, so. I would just, it break my heart to see it go. I walk the historical Betty walks every day through the district. Well, well, most every day. Most every day. <laughs> I mean, it's talk about walking through the historic district. It, I mean, it's oh, so it's, wonderful. It's just a joy. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, it is a it's, joy. it's a pleasure to see the old houses and and think about the town at the time when it was when there were. Um, Horses going up and down the streets instead of cars, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And the big old trees. I mean, that you can't. Yeah, it's yes. irreplaceable. And 
on a daily basis, I'm just thankful for it. I mean, oh, it's, I am too. Well, it's oh, such I love a living how we live. Yeah. But it, it's really nice. I, both of my children grew up on Belvin, and they have such good, heavy memories of uh, living there and the old trees, the large trees, and the, um, being able to. My son would. He and his friend next door would ride their bikes from our house down to the river to go fishing in the summer practically every day. But it was um, to see a neighborhood like that we have here is, is just a treat. Well, this has been very interesting today. Um, I wonder if 30 some odd years ago you ladies realized you were changing the face of this town for the better and the labor of love that y'all made has made such a lasting impression on the community. Any final thoughts about the historical districts and your work over the years? Oh, if I had known 30 years ago, however many years, maybe more than that, uh, I would be sitting here talking to you about it now. I would be amazed, but it never occurred to me that it could mushroom into what it is today. Um, but I'm so thankful for it because that means that there's a lot more people that want to preserve our heritage, want to preserve areas that their children can grow up like my two did, and have just a, a lovely neighborhood with the the old, like I said, the old trees, the old architecture. Uh, it just, I'm so delighted that it, it's what it is today, and I just pray that it never goes away. I agree with Diana. I never thought we'd be talking about this at this time, and I'm I'm pretty proud of us that we did get it going. And uh, I do, um, I do have concerns about the future because things change so drastically, and I just hope that these historic districts will remain as historic protected districts at some time. I'm hoping nobody decides that's not necessary anymore, and that our history will be preserved from now on. I guess I would say I have always loved old houses. I grew up in an old house and I'm pleased to live in an old house now. It, it has so many um, things that I can remember about and that I found out about the families who lived there before we moved in and um, my children were uh, in junior high, just starting junior high and high school when we first moved there to the uh, San Antonio Street. <clears throat> and I think they weren't all that crazy about living in an old house, but I could see when, when they got to be college students, then they would bring their friends home and they'd show off the house and especially the young girls thought it was great to, <laughs> to have this old house to, to grow up in. and um, I've enjoyed living in an old house. I think you have to want to um, because there are definitely problems associated with it too, but um, I love it. I love the, the feeling of family and, and the street that it's on. I, I think... Uh, the historic districts have definitely preserved something worth preserving in San Marcos.